All right, so this is picadillo, Cuban meat hash. Um, it's a ground beef filling, basically, and it's used in many other countries um, as the filling for empanadas. Um, in Cuba, they serve it over rice. Um, also, it's like the grandfather of taco meat, as you'll soon see. All right, so here's your recipe list. Um, I will let you pause the video and copy that down. You do need to have your recipe card ready to go on Wednesday. I'm moving right along. First things first, you're going to add a half a cup of water to the two pounds of beef, and you're going to boil the beef in the water until it's uh, almost all the way done. Break it up as it goes and set it aside when you're done. Over here at the meat, I flipped it and I'm just breaking it up so it'll be nice and fine ground meat. Okay. When the meat is done, or when it's that three-fourths done, and you're going to set it to the side in a clean pan, and I usually just clean the pan that I've been cooking in, um, you're going to cook two to three tablespoons of olive oil, or you're going to start with that, and you're going to add in the cup of onions and the half a cup of ch uh, chopped green bell peppers on medium, high to high heat. It just kind of depends. Um, my stovetop heats really hot um, in the medium high position, so I use that. Um, also, you don't want to add the onions and the green bell peppers until you've had the olive oil in the pan for maybe about 30 seconds, but um, you also don't want to wait too long either or the oil will burn. Um, so you're going to cook that until the onions are transparent, and uh, when that's almost done, you're going to add three to four bay leaves depending on size. And you just want to make sure nothing gets too hot. Just keep moving around. And you can see the onions are starting to get a little bit clear. You want them to be pretty transparent before you add the tomato sauce. Next, you're going to add the can of tomato sauce and stir. And then you're going to add the one teaspoon of minced garlic and the one tablespoon of white vinegar. In my video, I say white garlic. It's actually white vinegar as per the recipe. Okay, so this looks pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and add my can. So I'm going to have a of diced uh, tomatoes in sauce. You can get the garlic flavor if you can find it. Over on this side, I'm going to add about a teaspoon and a half of minced garlic. And we buy the jar kind. A tablespoon of white garlic. And then I'm going to give that a good stir. Gonna let those flavors meld. A tablespoon of white garlic, and then, then you're gonna add a half a cup of sherry or white wine, and salt and pepper to taste. Now keep in mind that you're not done boiling all this down, so you don't want it to taste perfectly salt amount um, right now because some of the water is gonna disappear and it's gonna get saltier as it does that. So I like to err on the mild side, maybe even a half a teaspoon of salt, and then the later I get, I can always add salt to it. I'm going to add a half a cup of wine, and in this case, my suegro always uses sherry, but in a pinch, I've used white wine before people thought I had Chardonnay, cheap Chardonnay that I cook my Italian sauces with, so add that in, and then you're just going to add salt and pepper to taste to this. Um, I think that it's somewhere around about a teaspoon. Okay, after you've added everything back in, you're going to add your meat mixture back into it. And then you're going to simmer it for another 5 to 10 minutes. And make sure you stir it often because if it burns, it tastes super greasy and tasteless. Now I've got everything in there. It's nice and simmering. And I'm going to add it back to the meat mixture, which is also pretty much done. Make sure that you're constantly stirring this so it's going to get burned on the bottom. And trust me, that does not taste good. And you want to maybe undersalt it to begin with because you can always add salt and you can't take it out. So I started with about a teaspoon for the whole batch, and we'll see what else I need. All right, finally, add about a half to one teaspoon of adobo seasoning, and that's got salt and pepper in it too, so you don't want to use that too heavily as well. And add uh, a third a cup of mojo. And the two tablespoons of capers are optional, but traditional. 
uh, only a little bit of caper juice um, should be added because it's pretty bitter um, and it'll change the way your food tastes. And then um, stir it well and let it lightly simmer on medium or medium low heat uh, for another 15 to 20 minutes while you make the rice. And here are pictures. This is what adobo looks like. This is what mojo looks like. And this is what capers look like. And you can get that all obviously from the Goya section or the Hispanic food section. All right, the meat should be um, to make the okay. The meat should be simmering with the lid off to reduce the liquid. If you keep the lid on, then it's not going to boil it off. Um, for the rice, you're going to start with a half cup of rice and a two quart pot that you have a lid for. It has to have a lid, and it's got to fit it perfectly. Um, and you're going to add one to two teaspoons of olive oil and half to one teaspoon of minced garlic. It just kind of depends on the flavor you want. And you're going to cook that on high heat, stirring constantly until you start to see the rice brown, and it's just going to barely, barely brown. It's going to be like a tan color. And then you're going to add your water and you want to have that water pre-measured out. Um, and it'll like immediately boil a little bit. And then you're going to just let it uh, add all the water and wait until it actually boils. And then you're going to reduce your heat to medium low and cook with the lid on for 20 minutes. If your heat is too low, the rice won't cook it up. So make sure you're at a nice medium uh, low there. Now while that meat is reduced, the liquid you want to start your rice. And in this case, I only have a half cup because I ran out of rice. But you can follow a cup recipe that I'll have listed on the website. And uh, and you actually just want to add the garlic and a little bit of oil that it'll stay and a tiny bit of salt and no water at first. And you just kind of cook that rice a tiny bit on high heat. And when you see that the rice is starting to maybe brown it in the tiniest bit, that's when you add the water. High heat until it starts to boil. And then you're going to put the lid on it and turn it down to low and cook it for that 20 minutes. The status of that meat looking pretty good. Just going to let it simmer. I still want to cook off some of that liquid, so I'm going to leave it on a high-ish level. I might turn it down just to it's pretty much medium. This is what it looks like when it's done. It's got the white rice underneath it and it's got the picadillo on top. Uh, the Cubans serve theirs. Um, with a fried egg that the yolk is runny and they cook that in olive oil. They like a runny, runny egg and then they put that on top of the picadillo and they eat it that way. I think that's disgusting, so I have mine with avocado. That's it.